Why do people hate real estate agents so much? I mean, where do we even get started? I've got a whole list here to go through with you guys. Actually, I'm kidding, that's just my to-do list. On a serious note, why do people hate this profession so much? I mean, we help people with the biggest investment of their lives, they should be trusting us, but there's so many reasons why people say they hate real estate professionals. It's common knowledge that it's one of the top five most distrusted professions in the world. So what I wanna do in this video is I'm gonna stir up the pot a little bit and I'm going to go through the top five reasons why people say they hate real estate agents and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my way of handling that objection so that you don't become one of those statistics. What's up everyone, my name is Mike Sherrard. Thank you so much for tuning in in the new year. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. If you love learning tips, tricks, and strategies on how to scale your real estate business the modern way, please make sure you subscribe and lightly tap that notification bell for me. Also, if you do get value from this video, all that I ask for in return is a thumbs up and I think you're going to want to leave your comments below specifically because I'm gonna talk about some controversial things here and I deeply want to know your opinion. I wanna know if you faced any of these objections. I wanna know if you have any that I didn't speak about. Now, before we get into it, I do have to disclose that these are not things that I just randomly came up with. After doing about an hour of research on Google, these were the top five most common that I found that people are saying they are the reasons why they they dislike real estate agents. So this is not my personal opinion. This is based on the studies that I've found. But again, I'm going to give you my opinion on how to handle it. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first one is lack of communication. Now think about this for a second. Studies show that the average mobile home user checks their phone 150 times per day. But the average response time for a real estate agent via text or callback is 917 minutes, which is over 15 hours. And for real estate agents that are constantly saying that they want their business, only 48% of real estate inquiries, so somebody inquiring off Zillow, Realtor.com, only 48% of them actually get handled, addressed, and responded to. It's one of the most common things that I come up with when I take over listings with agents that weren't able to get the property sold. In my listing presentation, I always ask the seller, what are the top reasons why you didn't like working with the previous realtor or why you you feel like the property didn't get sold. And every single time, 100% of the times, one of the most common things is lack of communication. There was no feedback after showings. There was no updates as to how the open houses went. There was no updates as to what's going on with the marketing. There was simply no communication. So how do you handle that? The best way to handle that is by establishing clear expectations up front. If for example, you are going to be out of town, make sure you are letting them know. What I personally have done is every single Monday, I take the day off and I spend that day doing thorough updates for every single client. I always have a schedule that they can follow and they know what to expect. It takes a couple seconds to simply fire text over, but establishing the communication up front, letting them know that you are a busy individual, you do have their best interests at heart, but you do have to maintain a schedule to make sure you're properly servicing all of your clients to the same level. So just make sure that you establish that up front before you start your contractual relationship. Number two was lack of respect, and this typically is tied to promptness. Now, what I mean by that is real estate agents tend to be late, late for showings, late for listing presentations, late for open houses is late for everything. You need to make sure your clients are your top priority. And if you are going to be late, just make sure you fire them a quick text well in advance to let them know that something came up. They need to feel like they are your number one priority. Number three is lack of transparency. Now, this is a crazy one. They can go all kinds of different directions. Statistics indicate that 75% of all current agents don't have enough experience to properly guide clients once a deal gets complicated. There are deals that do actually get complicated and there are situations sometimes that come up that are simply foreign to us, especially if you're new agents 
agent, or if you just simply haven't seen before, that's okay. But don't try and handle it like you know what's up. If a situation comes up that's foreign to you, you're unfamiliar with it, reach out to an agent that does. I've done a ton of deals myself in situations that I wasn't well versed enough to properly handle it. So what I did is I brought on a top agent who has done it multiple times over and I get them to help me with the deal. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. You don't need to be the superhero and do it just by yourself. It actually shows maturity and diligence with you saying that you need to bring in somebody to make sure that you get the best results for your client and they're going to respect that. A couple other things, exaggerating for marketing purposes. This is one of the biggest complaints you will ever find anywhere when it comes to reasons why people don't like realtors. You see on every bus bench under the sun, the number one agent at X brokerage, the top producing agent at this team. But if you look at the fine print, half the times it was they were the top agent back in like 2011. A lot of the times people feel like there's a lack of transparency when it comes to information communicated to them that matters right now. If you were a top producer back in 2009, great for you, kudos, I'm happy for you. That's actually a great achievement, but it's 2020. And if now you're doing three deals a year because something happened and you're no longer servicing your clients properly, then that's actually a problem and you shouldn't be trying to entice people to come towards you because of something that's happened in the past. Using credibility is important and it's important to leverage your accolades in order to help build your real estate business, but do it in a way that is transparent. The next one in terms of lack of transparency, and this I think is the number one, is when people are dealing with a property, disclosing level of interest in a property. Oftentimes I hear horror stories of people that wanted to write on a property and the realtor told them that there was all these other offers on the property, but there actually wasn't. And that was just an intent of getting them to increase their price. Oftentimes you find realtors that are strictly trying to nudge their clients in the way of their own listing so that they can double end it, even though it might not be in their best interest. So when it comes down to that situation, again, just please be honest. Yes, of course it would be nice to double end a deal, or of course it would be nice to get paid a higher commission. But at the end of the day, we are in a professional business. We owe it to our clients. It's in our fiduciary duties to be honest and have their best interest at heart. So if there is is a certain extent of additional interest in a property, disclose it in a transparent way. We see this so much as people throwing lies around about level of interest in properties only to benefit themselves. But at the end of the day, it's our client that matters, not us. And what you're going to see is that if you are honest, you're going to get so many more deals that come from that, that that one deal that you were hoping to just eke out a couple extra thousand dollars on is negligent. So do the right thing and please just be honest. Now, number four is easy commission. Everybody thinks realtors just make super easy commission and then we get paid way too much. I mean, it doesn't take a lot to get a real estate license, but what you constantly see and what the general public simply just doesn't understand is that we spend hundreds and thousands of hours honing in our craft, going to training, getting mentorship, reading books, doing everything that we can in order to become better agents. While most people are looking at the real estate license as an extremely low barrier to entry, which it is basically anybody can get it, but they don't see what goes on behind the scenes. A lot of people think that simply all we do is sign a couple documents, take a couple pictures, and then buyers come in and we just simply write a check and get all this money. That's simply not the case. The best way to go around this is to explain what actually happens. If you do have mentors, explain the process of what happens. Come on. So many people don't even understand what happens when you're working with a buyer or a seller. People make this a assumption that we just get easy commission because they simply don't understand what we actually do and what we actually do takes an astronomical amount of time and an extraordinary effort in order to do it well. So it's on you in this case to just properly educate them on what happens from start to finish with a buyer and a seller. Now, number five, this is one that you might not think about is lack of empathy. Now, hear me out. We do tens, hundreds, up to realtors that have done thousands of transactions. Sometimes people get the feeling we've become immune to the process. There's a lot of stress, they're overwhelmed, they're nervous, and sometimes they feel like we just don't care because we've been through it so many times, but what 
you need to understand is that it's their first time. So they need you to hold their hand. They need you to be comforting. They need you to be the resource that they can confide in and feel like you are going to be their savior. You are going to make sure that nothing is out of place, no beat is skipped, and that the process is going to be smooth and seamless from start to finish and that you do have their best interest in it. And show some sympathy to the fact that they are going through a process for the first time sometimes that you've been through so many times that now it just doesn't phase you, but they need to feel like you are in it with them too. Remove the ego, drop the stats, drop your numbers. One of my mentors, Ed Milet, as well as Andy Frizzella from the Arete Syndicate, mentioned that when you're working with any client, what you want to do is you want to match their energy level. Not just their energy level, but their emotional level. You want to make sure they are empathizing with them and you're bringing yourself down to what is comfortable for them. And what you're going to see is that when you are seen as their best friend and you are seen as somebody that they can put their trust in and be open and vulnerable with, you are going to be the most valuable resource and they are going to feel comfortable. And there's no better feeling for a client than to feel comfortable when they're investing this sum of money. So I really want to know what you think. If you have any other objections that you've been facing of why people dislike or honestly hate real estate agents and what you've done to make sure that you don't become one of those hated statistics. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you next time.